Only two countries. Who are the most successful country in the world? I would like to say Korea and the Taiwan only. Korea and Taiwan started in 1970s, try to develop new generation electronic industry from that time on, right? From last September 2024, Korea became the most trading surplus from Taiwan. Do you know that? We assembly servers, we need to import more memories from Samsung, from SK Hynix. So now we are not competitor anymore. I mean, Korea and Taiwan are partner, complementary to support each other. The best solution for Samsung is go to Taiwan to co-work with, with UMC. Also Samsung import many application processors from Taiwan for different categories. Upper market demands that like high quality demand, you know, Samsung has a very good application processor, Exynos, something like that. So homogeneous, cross country, there's a way for cooperation in the future. ね、お、ちょっと特別なゲストブルも出しました。デジタイムズ、コリンハンテピョンにお越しいただきました。ありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。いや、韓国人、ちょっと聞いてみた。ね。お、ちょい채널에처음 어,1983년,84년까지,2년동안韓国에있었어요。그래서아직도기억하고있다가그래서韩国말로대화해드리겠습니다그디지타임스는대만에서가장큰그하이텍미디어예요그래서고문팀도있고합쳐서2 5 0명의 같이 투자하는 업체예요. 음. 예를 들어서 TSMC의 파운더, SM 파운더, 마이텍 파운더 다 디지털 투자하고 그래서 우리는 대만의 하이텍 인더스에서 가장 큰그 어, 소식, 미디어 그리고 고문 담당하는 그 업체입니다. 음. 어, 저는 어, 1998년대 디지털 시상했고 지금 어, 28년가 되었어요. 아. Yeah. 대만의 또 하이테크 yes. 전문지 또 yes. 운영하고 계시고 네. 확실히 그 TSMC라든지 이런 또 포함해서 네. 반도체 산업에 대해서도 상당히 잘 알고 계실 것 같은데 책에서 어, 앞으로 10년은 대만의 황금기 즉 TSMC의 황금기가 될 것으로 그 전망을 하셨는데 이 급변하는 AI 시장에서 TSMC의 경쟁력이 흔들리지 않을 것으로 예상하는 이유는 무엇인가요? Yes, uh, if we consider why TSMC success, we need to identify three key success factors. First one mm. is process technology and the capacity. Mm. Second one is client structure. Third one would be ecosystem. Okay, let's think about the process technology. In case of the advanced chips, TSMC contribute more than 90% global market already. And because their capacity is the biggest one in the world, every 3 nanometer, 5 nanometer production line, you need to take 2 or 2.5 years to build your, your production line. So even you want to try, it's very difficult for you to catch up in that way. Second, client structure. Just an example, TSMC today, they have more than 500 core customers. So every customer, if you want to deal with the advanced ships, it took another two years again. So it's not easy to ask their customer to change their uh, production partners. Third one is about investment. Just an example, TSMC invest $32 billion for CapEx last year. And this year, they say no less than $40 billion. That's a big deal. Especially when TSMC on 65% global market. Then, if you are a competitor, even Samsung, even Intel, if you want to compete with TSMC, you need to invest your foundry business revenue, maybe three or four times for investment. This is almost impossible. Right? Just example. TSMC today, they have about 10,000 R&D engineers 
But as I know, Samsung may only have 3,000 in foundry. So there is a challenge. Even you have the money to buy equipment, you even you have the customers, you need to build your R&D team to support your customers. So you may stuck in the middle. It's very difficult. You want process technology capacity. You want customers. You also want, you also need to invest enough money to build the ecosystem. So it's almost impossible for that. And another key issue is about downstream industry. You may didn't know, in Taiwan today, we have 1,009 listed electronic companies. They do stock trading in the stock market. What means for that? You know, only 1,000 companies in Taiwan, their total revenue is about one trillion US dollars. That's a very big deal. Maybe you didn't know, Taiwan ICT industry is about 10 times than Korea. Not because Taiwan is smarter, because we have downstream industry, the company like uh, Foscom, Quanta, Compel, uh, Eventech, they all bigger than twenty billion US dollars. A company like Foscom, they are roughly equal to Samsung, two hundred billion US dollars. They buy a lot of components from outside, so called ecosystem. Taiwan has very good ecosystem compared to any other country, especially ninety percent of Taiwan high-tech companies headquarters located in Shinchu and the Taipei area, which is one hour distance, just like a Kyungkido in Korea, right? Very close, then people know each other well. So it's one hour distance. I need to go to Tsinghua University, Jiaolong University to teach the young people or to deliver speeches in the companies they located in Shinzu Science Park. Mm. So it's one hour distance. Easy for us to talk to each other. So there is a very special mechanism compared with any other countries. And you also need to understand, only two countries succeed over the past five decades. I mean, 50 years. Only two countries. Who are the most successful countries in the world? I would like to say Korea and the Taiwan only. You know, Korea and Taiwan started in 1970s try to develop new generation electronic industry from that time on, right? So we start from scratch. We need to learn, we need to understand global trend to catch up Japanese company, Sony, Toshiba, or even Intel in America. We try to catch up. And we are lucky because Korea and the Taiwan all have very good education system, good talent. Then we work very hard to catch the opportunities. But we are different. Most of Korean economy supported by conglomerates and Taiwan supported by small and medium-sized companies. We did the business approach like button-up. You do top-down. So we, today we have more opportunities for cooperation. Maybe you didn't know. From last September 2024, Korea became the most trading surplus from Taiwan. Do you know that? Now, Korea is the biggest one. We assembly servers, we need to import more memories from Samsung, from SK Hynix. So now we are not competitive anymore. Mm. I mean, Korea and Taiwan are partner, complementary to support each other. We assembly server, we ship to America. We sell to uh, not only Amazon, Google, Microsoft, Apple, but also HP Dell. But we need same semiconductor from Samsung and the SK Hynix. So there is a way for business. So Asia Pacific, especially Korea and Taiwan, now become a partner in many business way. 그 책에서 AI 시대 첨단 반도체 제조 기술에 대한 진입 장벽이 높아진다라고 말씀하셨는데 일례로 삼성전자가 HM4 제조를 위해서 경쟁사인 TSMC와 협력할 수 있다. 라는 부분도 다뤄주셨는데 방금도 그런 얘기를 또 하신 것 같아요. 이 부분에 대해서 좀더 말씀해 주시면 좋을 것 같습니다. Just example, you know, for over four five decades, most of Korean companies they see they think Taiwan is competitive. Taiwan also think Korea is competitive. But which is so called upstream downstream cooperation or competition? So we we need to protect our territory. But now we need to think about the metrics. What means for metrics? We have to cross the boundary to co-work with others. Just example, most of the Sony CIS, 
project, actually subcontract to TSMC for manufacturing. Samsung is number two brand in the world. Hmm. If Samsung want to keep that kind of business by themselves, a little bit difficult because cost structure is not right. So the best solution for Samsung is go to Taiwan to co-work with, with UMC. UMC has a similar infrastructure to compete with TSMC. Right? CMC always number three, number four in foundry business. Mm-hmm. Then they became the partners. So taking the way to think about Taiwan and Korea, we are not competitor anymore. We need to think about complementary. And also Samsung imports many application processors from Taiwan for different categories. Some of the upper market demands, that like uh, high quality demand, you know, Samsung has a very good application processor. Uh, Exynos, something like that. Mm-hmm. They have very good solutions. And they need to think about the middle and low end, how to work with, with the better efficiency. Then they will cover with Taiwan or manufacture not only in China, but also in India or other countries. So homogeneous, cross-country, mm-hmm. cross-boundary, there is, a, there is a way for cooperation in the future. So, you know, especially after Trump administration, like uh, customers, the terrible uh, war, U.S.-China war, we need to think about how countries like Taiwan, Korea, reposition ourselves. And uh, maybe one day we need to co-work together to go to Germany. So there is a way we, we need to survive in the future. So when Americans say chip war, hmm. there is a perspective from Chris Miller. Yes, he is historian. Yes, I agree with him. He has some good perspectives. But we are in the supply side. We are in the supply chain. We produce a lot. Then we take the different angle to think about cooperation and competition in the future. 그렇다면은 삼성전자 입장에서 TSMC와 협력해서 NVIDIA에 납품하는 것이 좋다. 그렇게 보시는 건가요? Yes. Yes. As I say, no boundary. No competition. Yeah. Even Similar semiconductor, similar foundry, similar mobile phone. We need to think about how to co-work together because customer needs. And the second, brand value for future. There is not similar like in 1990s or even before 2020. Mm. Brand business, just an example, if you buy server, you really care about the brand from HP or Dell or other companies? No. You don't care about that. You just care about software hardware integration, not like before. So brand business, even mobile phone. Today, the top 10 mobile phone brands is from China. So China have been established so-called red supply chain already. So if you want to take the same way to compete with uh, Chinese brand, no, that is a wave you can survive. Mm. And the most... Just just example, Samsung TV set is the best in the world, right? If screen size bigger than 15 inch, Samsung may have more than 50% worldwide shares, but Samsung TV set make profit, I just thought, difficult to make profit. Mm. So brand business is another way for making profit. But you need to think about smart home because TV set is a, is a window for family users to access information internal and outside. So how to build hardware software solution together? There is a challenge for Samsung in the future. 그리고 책에서 AI 반도체 생태계에서 TSMC, 엔비디아, SK 하이닉스의 삼각 공조를 강조하셨는데 앞으로도 이러한 쿠데 에코시스템 국권할 거로 보시나요? Yeah. 예를 들어서 한분 그 SK 하이닉스 회장 Mr. Che, yes, he visit Taiwan mm. because my my company just nearby Songshan Airport. Mm. When private jet from SK Hainan he fly to Taiwan, we knew that. <laughs> then I say yes, we just trace, and we knew they have a special meeting with uh, TSMC. You know, it's not 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 usual. Mm. So last year we found there's a possibility for cooperation. Then we try to uh, trace back. All of the details. So we got a special news about SK Hynix. They may have the plan to work with TSMC. And uh, how to balance that? That's why Samsung may come to Taiwan to deal with UMC mm-hmm. or with the local companies with any other solutions. 
So there is a way for business in the future. So don't care about the uh, the company where you come from. You need to think about the global market needs. That's one thing. Secondly, in my point of view, I think the global market need to identify five different categories. One is America. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, we need to follow. Mm-hmm. But do you know how many percent of Taiwan semiconductor export to America for all? No. Only 4.6% mm-hmm. to America. But two-thirds of TSMC customers are American customers. Mm-hmm. Company like Apple, they suck contract to TSMC. But they never ask TSMC to feedback the chips to America. Mm-hmm. They ask TSMC ship the chips to China for final assembly, ship to India. So until today, 81% of America, of mobile phones, Actually, still, they import from outside of our American market. So we need to think about global competition. Mm-hmm. But after Trump, customers, tariff, war, we need to think about how to serve the market in Germany, how to serve the market in India, Asian countries, or, or even China. So we need a broad perspective about global market trend in the future. The most powerful AI chips in the world will be made right here in America. Ship with you know, Taiwan Semiconductor. We have them made by TSMC. TSMC forms new and deeper roots in America. 